y'all. Welcome back to the jump. The Celtics are now NBA champions. Uh, the last one, I think I did it when they were up 3-0, and now it is official. They won it in five, and I've never been so sure that a team wanted to win one back in their home city more than I am now. They lost game four by 38 points. Celtics had 35 points in the first half, and I think... I don't know if they went into it with the mindset of, like, we want to get back home and win it there. But I think once they went down a little bit, they're like, all right, win it back in Boston. It ain't going to be too bad. And they locked in and dominated. And they got number 18 uh, NBA record. Um, yeah, most of any franchise, they won that. And uh, they can finally fill in the blank banner that was hanging up in the practice facility. I thought that was actually a pretty cool touch. Never knew about it until after the, the championship, but... Um, for those of y'all that didn't see it, there was a blank banner after the 2008 one, and they were waiting to fill that in. Um, and as a sports fan, I know like the Celtics get a whole lot of hate and stuff. Um, I've loved this Jalen Brown, Jason Tatum duo, like seeing this ride and seeing them rise to, to where they're at now, and now they're world champions. So I think it's awesome. Um, I know a lot of people kind of thought once Drew Holiday got there, they were the team to beat. Kristaps was obviously amazing, um, and it, it, this is the first time I mentioned it a couple of videos ago. This is the first time um, that the team that you knew was going to win it the entire regular season that they actually won it. It's the first time since like the the KD Warriors that that's happened. Um, they were the best team the entire year, and the best team got awarded the trophy uh, in the end. And you get Jalen Brown as the Finals MVP, very very much deserved. Um, First Finals MVP to not be named to the All NBA team since 2015, since Andre Iguodala. Um, like I said, very deserved. Um, I, it's not just not a shot at Jason Tatum in the slightest. He had an absolutely unreal series. But Jalen Brown, both sides of the ball, his court awareness on both sides of the ball. Like you could tell if you watched the series. That was the man that needed to get that award, and honestly, I don't, I don't hate anybody that thinks Drew Holiday should have had some votes, but like it, it was a close, close MVP race. Um, but Jalen Brown got it by a few votes, so uh, it's awesome to see him get that, and uh, finally get some kind of praise from the media and stuff. Uh, but yeah, like I said, Jason Tatum, not a bad series at all, and I think <coughs> late in this game there was a. Uh, Kind of the, the Jason Tatum trying to take the MVP show. Because uh, him, well, honestly, both him and Jalen Brown were both going ISOs there late, uh, trying to get some more stats, try to pad it, and, and maybe get the MVP. But, uh, yeah, what what a what a year for the Celtics. Uh, they finally did it. This duo that had been uh, crafted around, you got to feel bad for Marcus Smart. Uh, I see a bunch of TikToks about that saying, like, you guys did it and stuff, and I'm like, man, that's that's crushing because he was a huge part of the journey that these guys have had. Um, but yeah, and it, the, the, I think the most shocking part of the entire finals is that there wasn't a Kobe picture from Jason Tatum after uh, the game. So he kind of had like his own type of type of pose, him and Deuce, which the picture of him and Deuce, him throwing Deuce up in the air and the confetti in the background, that might be the coolest sports picture I've ever seen in my entire life. That is amazing. Uh, Obviously, he, he got some hate, though, as people tend to do, towards Jason Tatum. Uh, me, personally, I'm not a big Jason Tatum fan. I, I don't I don't like how he plays. But I'm not going to openly just hate the guy because I respect his game so much. Like, I just don't see the reason to, to bash him. Like, obviously, he had some bad shooting nights in the playoffs. But, like, man, like, he, he's a hooper. Like, he, he's a really good NBA player, and it's, it's proven. He's first-team All-NBA. You don't get that off of just... Just your name, uh, you, you got to play well too. So, um, but yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm I like Jay, I like Jalen Brown more, um, and I'm here for the argument if you want to argue that Jalen Brown is the better player between the two. But uh, with that being said, like there was a whole lot of Jason Tatum hate because of the Kanye West thing, where he said uh, everybody wanted to know what it, what we would do if we didn't win. I guess we'll never know. Obviously, stole that, um, and then he tried to do the. Uh, his version of the Kevin Garnett, Kevin Garnett saying anything is possible. He said, we did it. Same exact like motion, lifting his head back, screaming it loud. Uh, 
it was it was very similar. So he got a lot of hate for that. Um, I think Hater Report is the one that kind of tweeted the most about that. But um, yeah, I mean that duo. It's been really fun to watch. Um, so yeah, it, it's it's just cool to see them finally get over uh, to the top. It's been it's been cool. Um, and and they they get number eighteen now they lead the league so we'll see if the the Lakers can come back and tie them up but uh, they'd had their drought it, it had been sixteen years so uh, it's super cool for the C's and it's super cool for Joe Mazzula in year two like Ime Udoka is probably pretty upset right now but uh, Brad Stevens created one heck of a squad and uh, I'd assume they'll be the heavy favorites going into it next year uh, for the men's college World Series. Um, this was epic from a start. This was like, I, I absolutely love the Men's College World Series every year. Watch it. Barely miss games. It is amazing. I try to watch every single game that I can when I'm able to every year. This year, obviously, a little special because my Kentucky Wildcats were in it. Um, but this was a phenomenal one from the jump. Three straight walk-offs in, to, to start this. I think it was the North Carolina, Virginia, Tennessee, Florida State, Kentucky, NC State, uh, that was outstanding. Um, I mentioned the, the Tennessee Florida State game. Yes, Florida State got robbed. Yes, the dude for Tennessee went. But, I mean, you're going to have that type of stuff happen. Like, Tennessee kind of got bailed out and they got given that win. But, uh, yeah, I mean, that, that, that kind of chaos just happens. You kind of hope it doesn't happen at this level of game, but uh, in baseball you always get those uh, opinionated calls, um, especially on those those swings like that from the the umps down the line. But like I said, three straight walk offs is it, it was exciting. Every single game, uh, Mitchell Daly hit the walk off for Kentucky. It was awesome. Uh, Ryan Nicholson hit a home run to tie it in the fourth or not the fourth in the ninth inning uh, to tie it at four, and then we end up winning five four uh, off a solo home run in the tenth. Um, but man, what a what a event uh, to this point. And and as I'm filming this this morning, my uh, my bat cats got knocked out. So that was a uh, sad to see. But um, what what a season it was. Uh, my favorite season of Kentucky baseball of my life. Obviously, it was the best season. Uh, first time ever making it to home, Omaha. Um, I think we only lost one series in, in conference, I, th I think. It was, um, I mean, Ryan Nicholson, he either tied or broke the record for home runs um, in in a season for Kentucky. We broke the record for wins in a season. Um, first Super Regional win and second Super Regional win to make it to Omaha. What a year it was. Like, I, I can't even, I'd have to make a whole separate video to talk about uh, the emotional ride that this this team put us on uh, just a blast. Uh, it was a team that, if you didn't like Kentucky, you absolutely hated this team. Jack Caglione is an example. Uh, Tennessee, they're an example. Um, a lot of people hated them, but, but man, it was fun. Uh, this is the first time like that I feel like a casual Kentucky fan actually knew the players on this roster. And uh, you would see a lot more people post about them. Um, Obviously, I, I'd been going to games my whole life uh, the past few years, and this rise has been awesome. I mean, Nick Mingione, two years ago, uh, I think it was, yeah, two years ago after the season, was on the hottest hot seat a human could be on. And everyone, it felt like, wanted him to be fired. Mitch Barnhart trusted it, and we had put in that new park, and he was like, this isn't going to get it done. If you don't get it done now you're going to be fired next season. So it was a lot of pressure on last year. Uh, he recruited very well out of the portal. Um, and then this year did the same and went with the same mindset. And this is where it got us. So I think it's like kind of on the rise. I think uh, Mingione kind of has a, a blueprint of what he wants to do uh, going into each season. So I think it's going to be, be awesome going forward. Um, all the teams that are left uh, – Texas A&M and Florida are playing right now. Um, that one won't be over b before I'm done with this. But, obviously, okay, so A&M's up two in the first inning. Uh, and 
if Florida wins, they have to win against A&M again, I think. Uh, and then Tennessee just knocked out Florida State. So Tennessee is in the championship series, uh, just awaiting their opponent. So it'll be an SEC team once again uh, for the fifth straight year. Uh, I can't remember the exact order. It's like LSU won it all last year. Two years ago was Vanderbilt, I think, or Mississippi State. And then it was like Mississippi State, then COVID, then Ole Miss, I think. Uh, some Something of that order. Um, but it'll be another another SEC team. And it'll be a different one because it, it'll be Florida A&M or uh, Tennessee. But, man, A&M's tough. They, uh, they pitched their ace against us and then – uh, Florida today against Kentucky, man, they they put it on us. They scored seven uh, in the first inning. Uh, one of them was a grand slam. So it was all systems failure today. Uh, pitched our one and two already. Started our uh, third guy, and he ended up getting pulled in the first inning as well. So uh, it, it was a tough, tough scene. But, uh, yeah, I mean, all of the ACC is out. Florida State, North Carolina, NC State, and Virginia – what a year for all of those teams. NC State obviously battling against all odds like to get there. And then uh, they have to win at a hosted Super Regional at Georgia. Um, and they, they get through all that. So uh, North Carolina fans showed out all year. Um, Virginia obviously back-to-back years making it. Uh, what a year for them. And then Florida State, man, they, they kind of got the short end of the stick uh, officiating-wise. But uh, what a season for the Knowles too. So. Um, as of right now, the Kentucky and the four ACC are out, and then we're awaiting uh, the finals. So um, definitely check out the the socials and and stay updated with that. Um, but what a, what a what a men's college world series we've been given. It's been phenomenal. I've, I've loved every second of it. Uh, this past weekend, man, what what a sports weekend this was. We had the men's college world series. The Stanley Cup playoffs, the well, the Stanley Cup Finals, NBA Finals, and the U.S. Open. And this U.S. O- U.S. Open delivered. Uh, Bryson Shambo wins his second major, um, and I don't want to talk too much about it because uh, we we still have a, another major uh, that I'm really looking forward to. And I didn't get to watch as much of this because I was watching a lot of the men's college world series, so I won't have a whole lot to say. But what a finish! There was a the choking of Rory. There was the legendary shots from Bryson. Um, it, it was unreal. I want to highlight that bunker shot. Um, Lou Stagner, uh, Golf Stat Pro, it's, it's his name on Twitter. Um, he tweeted out, Bryson's bunker shot on 18 was from 55 yards. And he hit, it, he hit the ball to 3 feet 11 inches. The chances of hitting it inside 4 feet was 1.7%. With that pressure, with all that's on the line right there, that might legitimately be the greatest clutch shot I've ever seen. It, the best I've ever seen in my life. That might be the best ever. That is an unreal shot out of a bunker. Um, who, I don't remember who it was. Somebody was saying, like, okay, let's go ahead and prepare for uh, a, a playoff because that's definitely going to happen. And, I mean, Rory was a little upset, obviously. Um, but with with that scenario, you would think you'd be all right. But, um yeah, what what a what a clutch performance there in the end from Bryson and uh, Rory missing two four foot putts, uh, two four foot or less. Um, it was it was sad because he had, he had had I don't remember the exact number like 190 of those this season. He hit them all and then misses these two uh, that would have won him his first major since 2014 um, with the PGA. So. Uh, Rory obviously made some headlines because he's, like, getting non-divorced, I think it is. Like, that whole thing's been confusing because the PGA Championship, I think he was getting divorced. And then uh, this weekend, I think they got, like, undivorced. Like, they, like, didn't end up going through. Um, So that made some headlines, and then he left early. And uh, obviously there's some memes from it, but... um, Shout out to Rory. I, I hope he gets over the hump at some point because it'll be sad if he ends up ends up leaving uh, or whenever he retires and his last one being in 2014. It'd be tough uh, being one of the legends of the game and being at the top so long. And uh, I don't don't want him to go outside. Uh, to wrap this up a little bit, um, Coleman Hawkins. Um, I just wanted to highlight this one because obviously 
you guys know if you uh, have been subscribed for a while. I'm a college basketball, college football fan, college baseball fan, all above pros. So I want to highlight a little bit of my game, college basketball. Coleman Hawkins commits to Kansas State. Uh, the Coleman Hawkins sweepstakes were uh, chaotic, just like the, the type of guy he is. So um, he said that he wanted to go to a school where he could enjoy the football, which was an interesting one. So then everybody was like, all right, he'll go to, to uh, the Big Ten or, or the SEC, and he goes to the Big 12. That was very fitting for uh, – for Coleman, um, so hopefully Kansas State will uh, be be pretty solid this year. I mean, uh, what, what's the uh, quarterback's name? I'm blanking so bad. Um, I mean, they, I I personally had them. Um, I had them ranked in my preseason poll. Um, if if you check out on the socials. Uh, I had them ranked top twenty-five. I know, um, so hopefully they they do enough for Coleman to stay happy. Uh, but it is interesting. They just got Ugani Onyenso from Kentucky, uh, so he'll now be a backup center. But the the most interesting note about Coleman is that he's being paid at least two million dollars in NIL money, which is unreal. Uh, but you know he he played the game probably the right way. He was kind of the, the last guy left in the portal, and at the time, he was the best player in the portal. Uh, so, like, he's delaying all of that. Everybody else is committed. He's the best guy left. Obviously, you're going to give him a bag uh, to be able to get him. So, uh, Co- Coach Kleiman's got a lot on his hands. Uh, oh, and Avery Johnson, uh, that's the, the quarterback I was trying to think of. He balled out last year. Uh, so, hopefully, hopefully he uh, does enough for Coleman to stay happy. Uh, with with how they're performing on the gridiron, and then keeping it college basketball, uh, Dick Vitale is cancer free once again. He is just absolutely he's a warrior. He's duking it out. Um, had has had cancer multiple times, um, and obviously just a legend of the game. Some people like him, some people don't, but he's a legend nonetheless. Uh, so cancer free once again. Hopefully he'll be at some Kentucky games this year. Uh, obviously he was always a big advocate of Calipari. Uh, he's talked about Mark Pope numerous times and, and loves Pope coaching. So uh, hopefully he'll come out to Lex and uh, support the Cats this year. And fingers crossed, hopefully I get to meet him uh, here in the next year or so. Uh, and then lastly, another legend, uh, we had Dan Issel, then, or not Dan Issel, we had Bill Walton, then Jerry West, and now the Say Hey Kid. Willie Mays passes away. He is just a legend, like... Icon, I mean, he he's just a legend in every sense of the word. The Say Hey Kid, I mean, has the most iconic and greatest catch in baseball history. The over the shoulder, uh, which just got referenced in the Clemson and Florida series uh, that they had played uh, when uh, I want to say Jack Caglione, Cam, something, the center fielder for Clemson. I'm failing to remember his name. Uh, he made that type of catch, and it got brought up as that was made because Willie Mays has one of the greatest catches of all time uh, in, in baseball, if not the best. And and like I said, legend. Like I think he was batting like over 300 for his career. Um, and, and one of the things, like in my opinion, he is on the Mount Rushmore of baseball players. Uh, I think he was 93 years old. It, it's him, and then you can debate about who the rest is. Babe Ruth. Uh, Jackie Robinson, like diff- different icons, um, but what a legend! I- I'm pretty sure I'm pretty sure it's Willie Mays that was the one that retired uh, to go into the military, and everybody says that if he didn't do that, uh, if he didn't retire early, he would probably be the all-time home runs leader, all-time hits leader, like all these different things. But he left early in his prime and still had the numbers that he did. Uh, what a legend! Rest in peace, Willie Mays. Uh, we're, we're losing a lot of a lot of our sports icons and sports legends in these past few weeks. Uh, so rest in peace, Willie Mays. My condolences to to the the family and and all of his loved ones and stuff. And uh, what he did for baseball was absolutely phenomenal. Uh, obviously, he he's uh, 
just one, one of the greatest to ever do it. So uh, rest in peace to Willie Mays. Uh, with that being said, thank you. Uh, that'll do it for this episode. Thank you for tuning in uh, once again to The Jump. Uh, we'll be back next week with more updates and um, we'll probably talk more about life. I don't even know. We'll, we'll, we'll figure it out. We'll uh, do some rankings and different stuff. I know last year we did the, the tier maker, uh, but we'll, we'll do something. It'd be, it'd be cool for summer, so y'all stay tuned. Um, like I said, follow the socials. They'll be at the end of the video, uh, so I don't have to spell them out, and y'all can, y'all can just go find them on there. Uh, thank you. Have a great rest of the week. Uh, enjoy what's left of the the Stanley Cup Finals, um, and then enjoy this off season. And, and we're we're getting to the the days of summer. Uh, so thank you. Have a great rest of the week, and peace.